Are we alone? This has been a persistent question amongst humans for centuries, if not millennia at this point. It's one of our core questions as a species. But the history of humanity and our initial exploration of the universe would seem to suggest that we aren't. But to explain why, we need to zoom in a bit. This is you, a human being living in a town or city within a nation state on a continent on the surface of the Earth. Zooming out a bit, Earth is a rocky planet, with a relatively comfortable climate, a mostly stable atmosphere, and copious amounts of liquid water on its surface. But Earth is unique in our solar system. The other planets look very different. Mercury has no atmosphere, Venus is too hot, Mars is too cold, and the outer planets are gaseous and inhospitable to life. One might assume, looking at the solar system, that Earth is in some way special that humanity is special. But is this true? Are we special? What if I told you we've been here before? This thought that we're special, it's nothing new. It's happened countless times throughout human history, and for many of us it's happened in our own lives. But the same thing has happened every single time. The principle of mediocrity has borne out. The principle of mediocrity is a philosophical principle with some very real implications. It states that if you draw an object from a population containing multiple sets or categories, that you are most likely to draw that object from the most numerous category. This is just simple statistics. If I have a bowl containing five marbles, four of which are red and one of which is blue, there is an 80% chance you'll draw a red marble from the bowl. What this means in practice is that events that are most likely to happen typically do, and that events that appear special to humans with our limited view of the universe generally appear average and numerous on larger scales. The principle of mediocrity has borne out throughout history. The early tribes of humanity who didn't know of any other tribes probably thought that they were unique and special. But over time these tribes explored and discovered other tribes who were much like them. That impression of being unique and special dissipated as they realised they were one of many similar tribes. Many of us have experienced the same thing in our own lives. For some it's being the best at a particular sport in primary school, then realising when you go to secondary school that you're one of many good athletes in this sport in your wider area. For others it's more academic. You go through school as one of the smartest in your school. Then you arrive at university and find you're actually one of many very intelligent people that you are more average than you appeared with a more limited worldview. The principle of mediocrity has also borne out countless times in science, particularly in the study of astronomy. Prior to the 15th century, the prevailing view of our universe was known as the geocentric model, a view of the universe that placed Earth at the centre of the universe. The most commonly used between the 2nd and 15th centuries was the Ptolemaic model, essentially positioned Earth surrounded by spheres that held the celestial bodies, the Moon, Mercury, Venus, the Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and the fixed stars beyond. There was also a final sphere, primum mobile, first movable, that was meant to explain the apparent motion of the heavens around the Earth. It wasn't until the 15th century and the work of Nicholas Copernicus that humanity began to realise that the Earth isn't special within the solar system. It's one of several planets that orbits our Sun. This was the beginning of the heliocentric model of the universe, that placed the Sun at its centre. But the Copernican model still assumes the Sun is special, but once again the principle of mediocrity would bear out. In the 18th century, Edmund Halley would notice the position of three bright stars, Sirius, Arcturus and Aldebaran, had changed their positions on the sky significantly since measurements made by the ancient Greeks. This was the basis for William Herschel's discovery that the solar system is moving through the Milky Way galaxy. Other observations would determine that the Sun is a fairly average star, not very massive, not very hot, fairly mediocre as stars go. But the galaxy was special, right? The Milky Way was the centre of the universe. Once again, no. Edwin Hubble, who later gave his name to the Hubble Space Telescope, showed that our galaxy is just one of many in our universe, and a fairly average spiral galaxy at that. The principle of mediocrity has borne out again and again and again throughout the history of astronomy. But maybe, just maybe, we're still special. Maybe it is rare to form planets. Unfortunately, the last decade of astronomy has rather put this idea to bed as well. Observations from the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, or ALMA, have shown that most forming stars host a protoplanetary 
disk, an opaque disk of gas and dust surrounding the star. The star collects gas from the disk to grow, but inside the disk, dust grains stick together under gravity and form planets over time. In fact, this is a very common process. To date, we have discovered over 5,000 confirmed exoplanets, with many more still undiscovered. Current estimates, based on data from the Kepler Space Telescope and the Gaia satellite, suggest that as many as 25% of Sun-like stars in our galaxy could host an Earth-like planet. Some researchers estimate that there are as many as 2 billion planets similar to Earth in mass and orbital distance from their star, within our galaxy alone. Assuming these estimates aren't too far off, that is a lot of Earth-like planets in our galaxy alone. Not to mention the billions of other galaxies out there in the universe, which as we've seen from the principle of mediocrity, will be broadly similar to our Milky Way. With as many as 100 billion billion Earth-like planets out there, I see no reason that the principle of mediocrity will not bear out again. Whether we'll meet another alien civilization is an entirely different question, but the principle of mediocrity gives me hope that they are out there. This was a slightly more unusual video for me, looking back at the history of astronomy and one of the big questions we all have. Citations for this video can be found in the description down below, that's what these numbers are in the corner of the screen. If you enjoyed this video then I'd suggest that you like it and subscribe if you are new. If you'd like to talk about this video with like-minded people then come and join our Discord server, it's one of the best places to be on the internet. If you're looking for some recommended viewing, that is on screen now. And all that's left for me to say is thank you very much for watching this video all the way to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.